So Google I.O. happened recently with many updates for the Android, Web, Machine Learning, Google Pay, Firebase, and not forgetting Flutter. And this update is not just a refresher from the Flutter Engage. This was also the release of Flutter 2.2. There are many updates to the new version of Flutter. However, I'm going to focus on the four must-try updates that can help you in your current Flutter apps. So they are TypeSafe API from Firestore, new multi-platform widgets such as the hyperlink and scroll bar, deferred components to make your Android apps smaller, and lastly, debugging providers using the new dev tool. So let's get started with the first one, which is the Firestore Type Safety API. So I have with me a movie class, which has the title and genre, and usually when you want to work with Firestore, you will have a from JSON where you convert your map string object into the movie object or to JSON where you convert your movie object into the map string dynamic type. So the new type safety API looks something like this. So it is as simple as having your collection being called with a new method called with converter. And there are two parts. So the first one is the from Firestore. So what this does is that it gets the movie.fromjson method and then it will just convert your data from your Firestore collection into the movie object. So that's why it is called from Firestore. And then the next part is the to Firestore where it converts your movie object into a JSON or a map string dynamic data type. So this is why it is called to Firestore so that it can convert into a map string dynamic and then save it into Firestore. So now if I were to add a new movie, for example, Star Wars and my genre is sci-fi, we will have to pass in the movie with a dot to JSON method. But now with the new with reference method, you can just add in the movie object itself. And you can say it actually cuts down the amount of code that you need to type. And what if we want to get a specific ID? So before we will need to get the movie's reference with the doc and then with the specific ID with the get method. And then we will have to convert it from our movie class using the from JSON method with our snapshot data. But now we don't need to add in the movie.fromjson because from our previous movies reference using the with converter method, it actually does it for you and it returns you the movie object. And this can be very useful because first of all, it adds type safety, which actually can reduce the amount of bugs inside your Flutter apps. At the same time, you are writing less code. So with this new API, you have less bugs and less code. So the next update is the hyperlink and scroll bar. So let's focus on the hyperlink widget. So I have a simple blog web app that is from my provider state management course, link in the description. And normally when I want to do a hyperlink, what I will do is I will use an inkwell widget and the child widget will be the text. So if I were to hover over it, I'm able to see if it's interactive. At the same time, I'm able to use the on tap method in order for me to do some functionalities. For example, to go to a blog page. Now we are able to use the rich text widget that requires a text span. So this means that in your rich text widget, if a particular text is able to be a hyperlink, then you are able to use it. Then you will use these recognizer parameters and pass in this tab gesture recognizer object. And then you will set the on tab method into the functionality that you need. So the difference is that with the rich text hyperlink implementation, you could see that the new dev tool provider over here does not have any interaction except for the mouse cursor to be changed into a click cursor. So this is something that is not very familiar to a web user. So a web user expects when you hover over a hyperlink, 
you will see this underline on the hyperlink itself. So the thing is we are able to do that inside Flutter but it will take a lot of configuration and having an if else or conditional to just do this simple interaction. For web, if you were to use HTML, it is already pre-built for you. Therefore, using the rich text implementation might be a good use case, but it takes a lot of time. That's why I prefer to use the ink well, where it gives the interaction that I need even though it is not perfect. The next thing is we are going to go through on how to use the scroll bar. So for the scroll bar, it is already inbuilt in any kind of widgets that uses the scroll functionality. For example, the single child scroll view. So right now I have some overflown widgets. And then if I were to just use my mouse scroll wheel and just scroll down, you could see that the scroll bar appears. And then you could see if I were to hover over it, it actually darkens. Now this is a pretty good inbuilt widget for our scroll view over here. So other than the scroll bar and the hyperlink update, the next update that I think you must try, but it's a little bit uh, a lot of steps, is actually this thing called the deferred components. So what the deferred components does is that it actually installs the different modules and apps inside your application. So for example, if you were to have a crane app inside your phone, and then you will just have to download it. And this actually helps reduce the size up to 46%. And you know what that means? The less size usually means that you have more downloads. However, with this comes a lot of steps. So this is the steps that you require for you to use the deferred components. And you also have to go into the Android native code to do this deferred components functionality. So yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so this is a case by case basis. If you have like a super app that is really huge, then using the deferred components actually will help you reduce the size of your super app. But if your app is like pretty small, then I don't think you need to use these deferred components. So lastly, the provider tab. So the provider tab can be found inside your Dart Dev tools. Can you guess where the provider is? There it is. It is just beside the app size and the logging. So click on the provider and you are able to see your different providers. So I have with me a change notifier provider, which uses the counter, which extends the change notifier object. So inside this counter notifier, it has two values. The first one is a Boolean value that is assigned to the is odd variable. And then the second value is a zero, which is assigned to the private variable value. And guess what app am I going to showcase? Exactly, the counter app. So if I were to increment the number from zero to one, you could see that it animates from the color red to blue. I mean, you can kind of guess, like if it's odd, then it will turn not red and if it's not even it will turn blue so now we're able to see the value in our provider tab in our dev tools being updated live with our current app over here but the cool part is that we are able to actually change the value so let me change the value into 68 all right and then you can see that inside our app it actually says 68 and now I want to change my boolean value from true to false and now it will change into the red color so this is a cool way for you to actually put in your own values to test whether your app will actually break if you were to for example add a null and it actually breaks but since this is a null safety app this will not happen so the advantage of using the provider tab is that you're able to see your state live and you're able to edit it to make sure that your value actually don't break your app. However, the bad thing is that if you do not update it, then it will not work. So make sure you have the latest provider package in your Flutter app and at the same time, please, please, please migrate it to the null safety. So you can use the provider and have a less bug app. 
So in summary, the updates that I think you need to try is the Firestore Type Safe API and then the hyperlink and scroll bar widget in your current Flutter app. And also, if you really have a gigantic super app, you will probably have to use the default components that reduces the size for your Android app. But if not, then it is a good to know. And lastly, the provider tab inside the Dart Dev Tools is something that I would highly recommend you to use it so that what you see is what you get. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down on what is the Flutter 2.2 update that you are going to try out. So stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.